Hi, I'm Joni Catree, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I'd like to talk about one of the most specific questions that almost always comes up in a reading, and that is about marriage, and that is about marriage partners. When will I get married? When will I meet someone? And what will they be like? You have to be able to assess certain things in a chart to know this. And let me just dig in here because the first thing that I look for is the seventh house, of course. The seventh house is the house of the marriage partner. The fifth house is the house of meeting people, courtship, love, romance. But the seventh house is going to be our marriage partner and how we relate in relationships. So many people say, you know, how can the seventh house be the same person when I'm married more than once? The seventh house is always going to be how you relate. It's not necessarily always the partner. And that's a whole nother uh, aspect of astrology, which I believe you can count three houses from, from the seventh to the ninth house to get a better look at the next marriage partner. But looking at how you relate and your marriage and the opportunities as to when you will meet someone and get married, it's always the seventh house. So what is in the seventh house? If there's Mars, if there's Rahu, if there's the Sun, if there's Saturn, malefics there will determine many aspects of the marriage partner, what they are like. Now, if Mars is there, this is called Kujidosha. Kujidosha means when Mars is aspecting fully the seventh house, which means it's either in the first house, the seventh house, the 12th house, because it's aspecting, Mars is aspecting the 7th by its 8th aspect. Or the 4th house, because Mars is aspecting by its 4th aspect. So this is Kujidosha, which means there can be some difficulty, but does not by any means mean you won't get married or you won't find happiness and love. But it means you've got to work at it. There's a lot of things you have to work through. So... When I think about what the marriage partner exactly is, I'm going to give you a little secret that amazes people and absolutely works. When people ask me, you know, what will they be like? I go to the seventh house and I make it the first house and I read that chart as though it were the partner's chart, making the seventh the first. So therefore the eighth will be the second from the seventh, which means the partner's ability to make money. And many times when I see like Jupiter, Venus, or Rahu, Jupiter, Rahu in the eighth house, it can mean a very wealthy partner because it's the second from the seventh. You see what I'm doing? So the whole chart, even when you look at transits, will reflect your partner in its entirety as to their life and to as things evolve throughout their life, you see. So the planet that rules the seventh house, where it goes in the chart will give you major clues to your relationship, such as if you have the ruler of the seventh house in the 12th house, it could mean a foreigner or that your partner's never there, not there for you and feels distant disconnected. Maybe they travel all the time. Maybe they're not there for you emotionally, but that's what the ruler of the seventh in the twelfth will indicate. So sometimes you think Venus would be great in the seventh house, but it's not. It's way too much energy. Venus is the indicator for relationships and being in the seventh house. It is way, way too much energy there and can reflect the fact that the partner is very good looking, very uh, beautiful or handsome, and they have many suitors or people that are drawn to them. This doesn't fare well in relationships because many times this can mean jealousy because when you see your partner being, you know, approached by other, by others, 
this will affect the relationship in a difficult way. So be aware of certain planets in the seventh house. Um, Venus being too much the sun in the seventh house. That means a partner that's got to always be the center of attention. They shine. They're important. And you got to let them have their, their, their sun. You got to let them be the center because that's who they are. They are the sun which can make them difficult to get along with, but if you understand this is the way they are, they will have to shine and outshine you sometimes, and you're fine with it, that works. That truly works. The moon in the seventh house can mean fluctuations all the time, changing a partner that changes their mind quite rapidly about relationships. So you see, the planets in the seventh house will tell you so much about your partner and who you marry. So when will you meet someone? How can you predict that? Well, the biggest determinant is I always look at Jupiter, transiting Jupiter, is it aspecting the seventh house? That would mean it could be in the first house, aspecting the seventh by opposition. That could mean it's in the 11th house, trining the seventh house, or Jupiter in the third house. This can mean bringing together of a relationship or, of course, Jupiter transiting the seventh house. So 11, 1, 3, and 7 are going to bring in a relationship. But you need other variables to make it stick, to make it really last. And that means if you have Saturn aspecting the seventh house at the same time, this can make it stick and last. Jupiter and Saturn in the seventh house or aspecting, maybe Saturn's aspecting the seventh by its third full aspect, which means Saturn would have to be in the fifth at, or it's in the first, or if, it, if Saturn is aspecting the seventh house by its 10th aspect, this could bring a relationship. But one way or another, what I'm saying to look for is not only Jupiter's aspect to the seventh house, but Saturn's aspect to the seventh house. And many times the month when Venus is aspecting the seventh house by being in the first or the seventh, this can bring together a relationship, especially for a man, because Venus represents the marriage partner. Now in Vedic astrology, they say Jupiter is the marriage partner for the woman. I find this to be true on many accounts, but also look, also look to Mars for a woman's chart because Mars is energy. So if Mars is aspecting the seventh house by its fourth aspect, by its eighth aspect, by its con being in the seventh house, this can bring attraction as well. In other words, you want the most planetary energy occurring and happening to the seventh house to bring in a relationship, whether it's Mars, Venus, Saturn, Jupiter, even Rahu and Ketu. These will make relationships happen. So these are all the variables that I look for. And the next thing you must do is you must also look at the Navamsha chart. The Navamsha chart is, there's a reason why in parentheses it says spouse. So what I look for is the Mahajasha ruling planet and the Bhukti ruling planet. If either of those are in the first or the seventh house of the Navamsha chart, that window of time when you're in the Mahadasha or the Bhukti of planets in the first or seventh in the Navamsha chart, will be another indicator of a window of time. Then you whittle it down by looking at the transiting planets. Are, is Jupiter and Saturn aspecting the seventh? And most importantly, last but not least, always, always check Chandra Lagna, the moon as the ascendant. And one of the biggest things that I look for in terms of predicting relationship, marriage, coming together with someone, is when you have Jupiter either conjunct or oppose the moon. This will bring in a relationship. Watch and see. So if you have three or more of these specific things I have said, where you've got planets aspecting the seventh house by transit, and you have the Mahadasha ruling planets, 
the Mahadasha or the Bhukti, the, the next level down, those, if that planet is ruling the seventh house or in the seventh house or aspecting the seventh house in the birth chart, this can be the time that you can predict marriage. So basically, I'm looking for a number of things. And when you have three strong variables aspecting the seventh house, you're going to find that that's when they're going to meet someone. Now, there's one last variable that I look for. And that is the Dara Karaka. What is the Dara Karaka? Now, this is the system of Jaimini astrology, which I always look at the Dara Karaka. That is the planet that is lowest in sidereal degree. Remember, the Atma Karaka, which is who you are, is the planet that's highest in sidereal degree, represents you, but the Dara Karaka represents the partner. Now, let me emphasize I do not use Rahu and Ketu in the system, nor do I use the outer planets. They simply aren't a part of this system. So just looking simply at the planets, not Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, or Rahu or Ketu, whichever planet is lowest in sidereal degree is the Dara Karaka. Therefore, if I see Jupiter aspecting the Dara Karaka, planet and lowest in sidereal degree, or Rahu or Ketu, or Venus even crossing over it. This is a time that you could meet someone that could potentially lead you into marriage, serious, committed relationships. That's what I see for the seventh house. It is, it is all about committed relationships. So what is the seventh house? It's really about relationships that you feel like not only do you have a commitment, but there's some type of seriousness that you devote to someone else. That's the seventh house. The fifth house is more about meeting, dating, opening your heart, but not staying together. Okay. So remember to always look simply at the, the seventh house. This is how we relate. The planet that rules the seventh house, where it goes in a chart. Then you're going to look from the moon, Chandra Lagna, using the moon as the ascendant. What is the seventh house from the moon? What is in the seventh house from the moon? Very similar as to how you're going to relate to a partner. As well as where is the ruler of the seventh house from the moon? Where does it reside? It's going to give you all the information as to what relationships are like for this person as well as when they will meet someone. And last but not least, don't forget to look at the Navamsha. The Navamsha gives you the clues. Also, when you look to the seventh house in the Navamsha, what is in the Navamsha? If they have Mars, Rahu, Saturn, all in the seventh house in the Navamsha, that means in the second part of life, relationships aren't working out so well. Because remember, the birth chart is who you are. It's considered like the tree. This is how we see the birth chart relative to the Navamsha. The birth chart is the tree. But depending on the potential that is promised in the chart, how will it bear its fruit? Will what's, what's potentially predicted, what we see in the birth chart, will it bear its fruit? Will it, will it come to pass? Will these things happen? That is seen in the Navamsha chart, and that is why the Navamsha chart becomes real in the second part of life. And I mean in your 40s, not in your 30s, because when you have developed your life and you've come into being for what you're here to do, that is when the Navamsha comes to life, because it is the potential of whether or not what's promised in the birth chart will bear its fruit. That is in the Navamsha chart. So it is the fruit of the tree. Whereas you can see in the second part of life by looking at the Navamsha and the seventh house as to how relationships will unfold in a person's life. So with that, I'd like to close. I hope you've learned a little bit more about relationships in a chart. So if you would like to learn more and learn about Vedic Astrology, I have a university. Please go to my university website, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. 
Or if you'd like to learn more about me or you would like a reading, you can go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. Thank you.